Hey guys, Davo here from Tennis House. Today as a topic, I want to talk about the racket take back versus the shoulder turn. So too many players on the rack level take the racket back and they think they're ready to hit a great forehand. But there are a couple of problems with that and I want to go through those with you guys. And I want to go a little bit deeper into the shoulder turn. Okay, so if you have a couple of minutes, stay with me because that's going to be a very interesting forehand video for you guys uh, to actually improve a lot of things and to have a better forehand. And as always, if you like what I do, take a second to subscribe, turn the notifications button on and let's get straight to it. Okay, so I will show you first um, the shoulder turn, how it should look like. So right when when we when we're in the rally so you hit a forehand and right before your opponent strikes the ball you're going to jump up right so you need that split step right when the ball is on the strings to make sure you can go either to the i don't want to talk about that too much so you know all, all of us know you need a good split step every time and the important part happens and that's the shoulder turn the shoulder turn coils your upper body and and against the lower body so you have a coil up here so now what i always tell my players when you split and turn your arms are on the right side out here okay the racket hat is above the wrist which is very important i will come to that in a second when i talk about the rack take back like that okay so we split turn and the racket is out i always call this the strings point to the crowd if your strings point to the crowd you're in good shape here so now the key thing what a lot of players do wrong is you split and turn you look for the ball now in this position so you're ready now to go and search the ball and then the actual take back of the racket happens when the ball bounces this is very important so there's a difference between taking a racket back like this running around which is going to be hard because if you want to run you're going to run easier like this than the arms so separate too far apart you're not going to be able to coordinate that well that's one issue and the other thing is when you turned here and the racket is out where do we hit the ball like the contact is going to be diagonal in front of us right here so why having the racket here and the arm here and separate so one big thing on the forehand is there are so many things on the forehand side that can go wrong so your, your left side is in front of you not the hitting arm on the back end your hitting arm is in front of you so it's easy to turn that's why a lot of players have it easier on the two hand the back end to hit the ball on the one hander because everything is on the side and ready to go on the forehand there's so many things where you can mess up prior to the actual forehand so remember when your arms are separate like this you don't have any control of what's happening you're too loose so that's why the pros when you see them playing they split they turn and now as i said the key is you look where the ball is going to be and then when you're ready and you go from you shift from the right to the left leg on the let's say you have a close stance shot from the right to the left leg but everything stays here and that's where a lot of rec players mess up they run and they keep the record like this so everything stays on the right side and then you shifted your weight from the right to the left leg and then when the ball bounces that's when you initiate your take back you drop the racket head and you start to swing and hit and that is so important to have a good forehand so if i have a running forehand and i, I have to split turn run and search the ball and then i do all the rest so i go split turn run search the ball and hit so you cannot run like this it's all about control controlling the shot and the most control you get on a good term take back so on the shoulder turn as well when you split and turn make sure that as i said the racket head is above the wrist why is the racket head above the wrist because now when the ball actually bounces you have from here till here i call it way of acceleration so if you just take the racket back here and the ball bounces there's no you start from zero energy so you just go and hit the ball like this 
if you have the racket head up you're adding this part of acceleration and that is so massive and crucial and this helps you as well to create more topspin if you have the racket if a nice shoulder turn here so this little part helps you to get under the ball you remember we need to come from below the ball hit below the equator of the ball hit up and around to create topspin if your racket is here and the ball is here there is not much topspin you can create on that ball so not just having the racket arms out on the shoulder to not just that having this up here creates more topspin it creates more racket head speed as well because when you hear and then uh, like Rick Macy says like you know flip the racket so you hear and you flip the racket that creates as you can hear the sound that creates racket head speed as well so you're on, on the good side of the top spin you're on the good side with the speed so why would you keep the racket and the hand separately so you know it's for, so hard for me to understand but once you manage to keep the arms out you're going to have a good shot obviously on the forehand side another thing is what a lot of recreational players do wrong and i'm going to face you going to face the other side now guys so if you take the racket back here a lot of players try to search for power taking the racket too far back around here so now in this position my opponent on the other side could see him or herself being right here like could see him or herself like seeing that racket head on the other side so from the other side i can see the racket head that's too far around so when we keep the left hand on the racket hard on the shoulder turn that helps us to avoid to step too far around with the racket and just have too much angle on momentum the problem is you start here they like to go here and then the whole shot is a mess to keep everything compact and to keep everything strong you need to stay on the right hand side and keeping the left hand longer on the heart with the strings facing to the crowd until the ball bounces going to help you as well to not go too far around the body and then you can start to pull from the right side so i like to do sometimes i like to do the drill where you position someone close to the double alley there and you turn and then you just toss the ball like right around the line there so they have a marker and then they have to stay and follow that line so everything stays on that sign on that side so there are a lot of benefits taking keeping the left hand longer on the racket heart another thing that's going to help you guys if you do the right shoulder rotation the preparation is that you guys are going to be have a great timing on the forehand because when you see where the ball is going you, you're turning here you can time the take back better right so when the ball bounces that's you don't have any time so you have to be ready and in this position as soon as the ball bounces you're going to initiate the forward swing there's not, not much time coming when you look at the slow motion one of the best players the ball bounces and now they go forward and hit it so you're going to have a better timing it just feels better to coil the upper body and uncoil and once you create that rhythm that's another thing a lot of players um, do wrong especially guys or tall guys like me the guys like to slam and hit everything hard once you learn to coil the upper body and uncoil and keep the left hand on there so you have a really good uh, shoulder turn then the racket take back is perfect as well and um, one good drill for that is if, you, if I look straight in the camera right now I like to have the player having a shoulder with stands and I like them to just rotate the upper body against the lower body now and so you feel a stretch here so on both sides actually so you can see how stiff a lot of people are there that a lot of people not even able to go so far around so therefore stretching is important you need to make sure that the uh, thoracic spine is flexible because that's a big part of tennis it's not just being on the court and hitting balls the physical limitations of a tennis player hinder a lot of players to be very good on the court as well so if you can't rotate your upper body against the lower body you're gonna play more with muscles you're gonna muscle the ball more right so you're gonna not have so much efficiency it doesn't feel fluent a lot of factors playing in there so the good warm-up drill every lesson is before you come out and start to play just rotate the upper body against the lower body a little bit like this and make sure you stay nice 
and loose in the upper body because then later on after this you do the same thing but you hold the racket in the right position for the forehand shoulder turn so you can turn now and get the racket in the right position and remember what I forgot earlier to say on a great shoulder turn the left hand adjusts the racket angle on the forehand my left hand gets the racket in the right position to hit the ball one more thing I have to add on the take on the, on the shoulder turn is when you if you're one of the players that takes the racket back early it's going to be hard as I said with the timing and you go too far around another thing you can do to fix that is when you, that you have a good shoulder turn and your elbow leads first so if you uh, you see it curious all the like the modern players the elbows is, is they're up high here and they're holding the racket actually like this and then they flip the racket so if you're one of the players that goes too far around make sure that your elbow is leading out and then you hit that ball because if the elbow is here you cannot go too far around there so that's going to help you as well to to not go too far around the body and uh, great practice is when you go on the wall for example you hit the ball on the wall first thing you do is rotate your upper against your lower body and try to go like 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 counting like when you have a rhythm like like one two i use always I feed the ball in it's like one is the shoulder turn two is the hit one is the shoulder turn two is the hit and if you create a rhythm or you rally with someone you go one two one two and one two that doesn't work you need to have a coil and coil so try that out it's not about muscling the ball it's about the right technique on your shots and if you have a forehand with the early preparation you're gonna most likely not be late on the ball as well the problem is it's like when you play and you initiate the shoulder rotation too late you're gonna hit a lot of balls out and the indicator for that is if you're in a forehand rally let's say and the ball comes and you're not early prepared and you hit the ball late the ball will go if you're a right hander on the right hand side out of the court so when you rally with someone cross court and you're not early enough prepared you hit the ball late the ball is going to sail out to the right side so you need to make sure that as soon as you see where the ball is coming that you rotate your shoulder and i hope after this video now you're not going to be one of the players anymore who when the ball comes they take the racket back that's not a rotation that's just a racket take back and it's not the actual proper technique on the shoulder rotation and forehand swing because you rotate your shoulders first then you have a little take back here and then you hit the ball so that's a big difference than just taking the racket back and one more thing how you can determine if you're a player that just takes the racket back so if you look now if i just take the racket back like this my belly button points forward diagonal forward so if I would have a real upper body rotation against my lower body, now my bo belly button points to the crowd or to, yeah, to the right hand side here. So there's a big difference. You can have that as a checkpoint. Record yourself. If you play and you look like this and your belly button points diagonal forward, you didn't coil. If you turn your upper body and the racket is out here, your belly button is going to point to the fence or to the side. And then when you coil here, you uncoil and hit. When you down, your belly button points a little bit to the left diagonal or even more to the left. And if you hit, if you're already open, you're not going to be able to control the ball so the best players in the world when they really put everything in there the belly button points to the side they hit when they're done everything the whole chain released and the belly button points to the left so that's another indicator for a good successful forehand from the starting point and to the end and i always say if your preparation is good and your ending finish point, which should be on the forehand, they're different, but on a regular rally ball, it's gonna be probably around here. If the ending is good and the initia initiation of the shot, then most probably your contact point and what you do in the middle phase of the shot is gonna be correct as well. So keep that in mind. As always, if you like, subscribe, spread the word for Tennis House. I'm gonna shoot the next video right after this one, actually. And I hope you enjoyed it, and I wish you guys a beautiful day.